So here I am with my brother Maishi. You all know my brother Maishi is from charity.com. And he's raised over $570 million dollars from Queens. over 1,500 charities. From Queens. Forest Hills, Queens. The most beautiful city in New York. So I came here to just take a few minutes of my brother Maishi's very busy time to talk to him about penny pinchers. Penny pinchers? What is a penny pincher? Penny pincher is a person that has money, thank God, in the bank, has money in savings, maybe a 401k, maybe an IRA, maybe endowments, maybe investments somewhere. But some reason or another, they cannot figure out how to part with some of their money. Now, we're going into the new year, 57, 79, in just a few weeks. And I wanted to ask my brother, as a person who's raised so much money for charity with so many people around the world, Jewish organizations and non-Jewish organizations alike, what he could share with you, the person that has a hard time taking money out of their wallet and out of their bank accounts and giving it to an organization to do something awesome with it. Maishi, please share with us, just from your heart, right off the cuff, anything you'd like to share with us on this idea of how to get someone to give charity that has not been used to giving charity. Uh, it's a very good question. Um, one that I think uh, organizations really struggle with. Um, generally uh, speaking, you know, enough, not enough money is given to charity overall. Um, one study has shown that less than 3% of the GDP is given to, to, to charity. So it's a lot of money, it's $400 billion, but uh, you know, we're nowhere near any like sort of tithing or any type of really significant percentage of the earnings. So there's a lot of growth, there's a lot of room to, to, to grow. Um, first of all, just a side point, I don't usually do interviews. Generally speaking, I'm a pretty shy person in public, um, but I'll make an exception for, for, <laughs> for my, my brother. My brother's um, also very humble. Yeah, no, I'm extremely humble, very modest. So I think there's a few things that could help motivate people um, to give. So one of the things is actually um, a little bit counterintuitive, but it's actually the top, um, probably the first and most important reason. Um, you know, they, they did a study and they asked, uh, I don't know, a few thousand people what the, what the reason is that they, gave, that they gave to charity. And um, you'd be surprised that the answer was the reason why they gave was, the top reason why they gave was Maybe you think tax benefits, or maybe you think because you know there was a real need that they cared about. So those were obviously all answers, but the top answer, the most answered, was because somebody asked. Okay, and I think that you know that's the, the, really the first thing. You know, people are, work hard for their money, and um, it, it's one of those mitzvahs that are, that are not easy. It, it's obvious, it's clear that you know to do an act of, of kindness. But you work hard for your money. You toil for for, for your money. So to 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 um, part with it is not is not easy, and it's one of the reasons why there are fundraisers. Why people are there to ask. Why wouldn't just people just people give naturally? And the reality is is that people need to be motivated to give. As good as they are, as kind as they are, as concerned as they are, the fact is that they it's 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 in our nature. For when we work hard for something, we deserve it. But if we wanted to give it away, it needs to be. They need to be motivated. It need to be asked. So that's 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 number one. If you don't ask, you don't get. And you'd be very surprised by how much we could increase giving by simply asking. So whether that's a fundraiser asking from their for their organization, whether that's um, you know today everybody has the opportunity to raise when you do a peer to peer crowdfunding fundraiser campaign where you can ride a bicycle or drive through mud or, or uh, you know, dance for 24 hours. There's a lot of ways that you can raise, raise funds. And we see tens of thousands of people are raising peer-to-peer -peer for the organization, and they're just asking. <clears throat> um, so that's, that's, that's number one. Um, number two is its impact. Um, as much as you know, giving is a, is, a, is a selfless act, and we hope that everyone would give uh, selflessly and without uh, any you know, expectation of anything in return or expectation of seeing the results imminently, the fact of the matter is that I think we live in a generation where <clears throat> results are much more um, expected much quicker. You know, we live in a microwave age and it, perhaps it, our, our grandparents or our ancestors gave more out of legacy, more out of, 
out of uh, lishma, you know, for, for, the, for the cause, and strictly um, for the most uh, selfless uh, reasons. But today we live in a different generation. People want to see the result of, 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 of their funds. <clears throat> and they want to be able to make a difference. They want to be able to make an impact. And I think that if people are able to see a clear impact, a result um, from their funds, they'll be much more motivated uh, to give. And that can be done in, in, in many ways. I think it uh, starts with the, the organizations that are raising funds to put extra effort on um, showing the impact that, um, that they're making with their funds, be much more transparent on how each and every dollar is being spent to create X result, um, and how that X result is impacting the community, impacting people's opportunities, etc. Um, and then there are other ways to show impact by showing the value of even a small amount of money. So one of the things that we do with charity is crowdfunding is where we believe that you know giving shouldn't be done in isolation, it shouldn't be giving alone. And if you really want to see the impact, you should give together with other people. Because an organization that needs to, you know, buy a, a, an ambulance or build, build, build a building or, you know, cover a, an annual, you know, annual campaigns for 20 scholarships, you know, one person, it's very rare that one person can cover the whole thing. Um, so when people are giving together even small amounts, when you can gather them in the hundreds and, and even the thousands, 50 bucks from everybody doesn't do much damage to your wallet, but it, it actually get the project done. So if we have a synagogue that has a partnership or a membership, and everyone contributes a certain amount of money, that makes a lot of sense. Everyone feels part of something greater than themselves. It's, we would, would it be fair to say that there's absolutely no reason why a person shouldn't give? Because if everyone is contributing towards something awesome and great to build their community, I can't think of any reason for them not to give. Would you right. say that's So the, the challenge is organizing that scenario. Um, it's very difficult, it's, it's hard enough to get people you know, it's actually, there's, there are different strategies, but you know, the Yom Kippur appeal. You know, there's, there's a certain communal feeling to the, you know, the age old Yom Kippur appeal, which really, it's, it's one of the most successful fundraisings throughout the year, historically, because you have all those sense of shared responsibility, the sense of community, even a little bit of peer pressure, you know, it, that, but that peer pressure motivates people. Um, it's, a, it's a healthy motivation. Yes, it's a healthy motivation. So we could, I don't want to say fabricate, but we could, um, there's a recipe, there, there, there are ingredients to create the recipe where you can do that without a, without a physical space. You can do that, you know, we're, we live in a very hyper-connected world, so we can create that Yom Kippur feeling and that Yom Kippur vibe through social media, um, through great communication, through platforms. So, um, if you wanted to say one thing to people out there that don't regularly give or find it very hard to give, what would that one thing be to motivate them to actually give tzedakah, to give charity? Uh, imagine, um, here's what I would say. Think about The Matrix, the movie The Matrix, and how um, there was a realization that the world, that world um, was made up of a broad matrix of, 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 of code, right? And you weren't able to see how reality was being built and how reality was being created but when you were able to see behind all of it and see that code, there were millions and trillions of different code sets that were creating the reality, okay? It's the same thing in, in, in our world. Hashem created the world, and uh, He, uh, instead of you know, making everybody uh, you know, well, well off, He created a, an imbalance, so to speak, and He made us partners to, 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 to feed that and to arrange that imbalance to make sure that you know so the, the rich give to the poor the middle give to the everybody gives to everybody and the reality is that you're not giving alone you're part of this matrix so, think so in about, our case we're like you're part of the shul you're part of the community when you're giving you have to believe that you're part of the matrix and when you're giving five dollars in that moment there are tens of thousands of other people giving five dollars at the same moment every single morning it's 8 30 you're davening you're putting it's the exciting it's it, so think about it when you do it it's like as you're doing that 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 whether you're putting it into a pushka whether you're doing it on your phone there are millions of other people who are giving simultaneously and you're part of a much a, a much greater um you know Matrix. reality reality Thank you very much, Maishi. God to bless you. You should go from 570 million to a billion to multiple billion until the coming of Mashiach and Herve of Amen.